I see lots of agency owners getting quite disheartened and getting a bit down when they spend ages writing a proposal and basically don't win the project. So usually what happens is that we have this great conversation with a potential client. They get really excited about working with us. We get excited about working with them. They say, this all sounds great. Just send us over a proposal. And so you go away and you spend, you know, sometimes an hour or more putting together this proposal, making sure that you cover everything in there, making sure that you've got a detailed outline of the brief and the requirements and all of the things that need to be done. Uh, you fire up your email, you send it across to the client, and then you patiently wait for them to get back to you. And they either just ignore you uh, and pretend they've never spoken to you before, which is kind of weird but it happens or they just come back to you with some kind of vague reasons why they can't move forward maybe they've chosen someone else or maybe they've just decided not to launch that project and it can be really frustrating because it could be a cool project you could know that you can really help their business or you can you can add lots of value to that project and we're kind of left in this space where it feels quite frustrating quite demotivating and I know a lot of creatives especially can get into quite a negative headspace where they start beating themselves up and you know all sorts of kind of negative patterns and negative thoughts can go on in our head. So what I'd like to share with you today is a tool and a framework that allows you to get an answer much more quickly from a client, um, preferably there and then, so that you know whether this project is going forward or not. Um, even if it doesn't go ahead, you know exactly why it hasn't gone ahead, right? So you've got some detailed feedback that you can add to your offer that you can improve so that next time you're on a call with a client, um, you're kind of ready for these objections or these things that come up, um, which are concerns for clients. And kind of ultimately, that's going to lead you to be able to close way more deals and actually work on more projects you love because it's going to be an opportunity for you to actually handle some of those concerns and actually really understand why clients don't want to move forward. And often we find that in that conversation, if you use this tool and if you use this framework, it actually allows you to go ahead and win that project. Importantly, from a place where you're actually a partner with that client. So they respect you and they value what you do rather than just kind of being a worker or creative monkey as a lot of people refer to it as. So that's what I kind of want to share with you today. We call it the, the one page sales framework. And this is kind of what it's all about. It's all about getting rid of being ghosted um, and essentially closing more deals. So um, what does this look like? This is the one page sales framework that um, we share with all of our clients. This is what we teach. This is um, what we help our clients to implement our clients being uh, small boutique agency owners, studios, creative studios. Um, so this is the thing that's going to kind of help you to not get ghosted anymore and actually close more deals. So I just talk you through each one of these stages really quick and then that will give you some context around what each of these kind of little sections are. So the idea is that when you jump on a call with your client, you will actually kind of go through these stages in order. Uh, when you jump on a call with your prospect, should I say, not client, so your potential client. So you're probably doing this anyway. You're probably quite good at building rapport. I've just got an image of a, a dog here because... Uh, Dogs and cats, right? It's uh, an easy topic, an easy thing to, to build rapport on. Have you got any pets? Have you got any kids? Um, you're basically trying to find some, some common ground. So really, within the context of a sales conversation, let's say your sales conversation is going to be an hour, 45 minutes, something like that. You shouldn't really spend more than two to three minutes building rapport because otherwise what happens is you just get down this tunnel of having chit chat rather than actually having a sales conversation, which kind of leads me to my next point, which is the pre-frame. The pre-frame is a really, really important part of a sales conversation. A pre-frame is really just telling that prospect what to expect. And if there are any things that you need them to do on this call, or any things that you feel are important for them to know before the end of the call so it's not a surprise to them, this is where the pre-frame comes in. And a pre-frame is really just kind of telling people what is it we're gonna talk about today and what is it that we need to do in order to get the most from our time. So in a pre-frame, you might actually just tell them what the structure of this conversation is gonna look like, what we're gonna talk about today, and what the aim of the call actually is why are we here what are we talking about and then if there are any other things 
that we need to know. So I call this housekeeping. So I might tell them how much time we've got today. Um, I might say, look, we need to keep this within an hour because I've got a call after this. Um, I might say something like, you know, can you make sure that emails and things like that are shut down so that we don't get distracted? Anything that kind of needs to happen in order for you to get the uh, most from this conversation. This part, most people miss out because they're so kind of busy worrying about whether they're going to get the sale or not. And they're kind of thinking about how the the client perceives them that they forget that actually they're the one with the cookie jar right they're the one with the rewards they're the ones that are able to help the client and so the client needs them as much as we need to be paid we can actually get paid from multiple clients right so the authority piece is really about getting them to confirm why is it that they chose you right so I just like um, to ask people why me or why us like why what is it that you saw what is it that you heard what was it that the referral said to you that made you think that it was worthwhile for us to have a conversation today and that just kind of solidifies the kind of authority piece because at the end if they say oh well we're looking at other competitors you can say okay cool well at the start you said this is why you kind of chose us so it's it's kind of going back around in in full circle then we want to kind of jump into the meat of the conversation and the two islands is a concept that we share with our clients a lot which people find really helpful and the two islands is really just looking at where they are now and where they want to be so island a is where they currently are what's currently going on in their business and island b is where they're trying to get to right so we want to get really clear on these things so think about the things that you need to know about this business or about this project in order to be confident that you're going to be able to help this person so it might be their revenue it might be their average client it might be their current levels of traffic or how they get exposure to their website what are the things that you need to know in order to be confident that you can help them and then where are they actually trying to get to what's the ultimate result rather than why do they want branding what are they actually hoping to achieve with the branding like what why is or what is it that they're actually trying to to get done um, and most people miss this part because they spend too much time focused on their services rather than what the client's actually trying to get done then we want to ask them okay cool like what's standing in the way so right now what do they believe is stopping them from achieving this outcome what's currently stopping them from getting to island b and this is a good opportunity just to hear them kind of list the things that they feel are preventing them from getting there and then we really want to kind of look at the impact of this because most most prospects most people don't think about the long-term impact of their current challenges or the long-term benefits of reaching that goal and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people aren't willing to invest the kind of money they need to invest in order to get the result is because they're not thinking long term they're thinking short term they're thinking oh this money's going to come out of my bank account we're going to have to do this we're going to have to do that they're not thinking like what's the cost if this doesn't change what's the cost of this staying the same so that's another great question you can ask what's the cost of these things staying the same and on the flip side you can also look at the impact of the positive so what would be possible if you had all of these things or what would be possible if you could overcome these obstacles why is this important then once you've kind of established that i would then invite that person to discuss what we think is actually happening so a little bit like going to the doctor i would just say look would you like me to give my perspective on what i think is going on here and so in this i usually just repeat this section it feels a bit weird to start with because you're like oh we just talked about all of that stuff but it's really important to actually make sure that you've heard what they've said correctly so i would just go back over this and i'd say so what i heard is that right now this is where you are and this is where you're trying to get to and what you see being the obstacles are a b c and the reason that that's important or what's going to happen if you stay the same is this impact and what's going to happen if we overcome this is this impact great have i missed anything and they might add a few things or they might say no that's pretty much everything and then i would talk about okay cool would you like me to share how i think we could solve this or what i might think is going on and then i would just tell them a little bit like a doctor i would just diagnose their problems and i would list a few points of things that i thought were uh, mistakes or solutions to get them from a to b and rather than solutions i might say uh, strategies right mistakes or strategies that are going to help them get from a to b um, then i would probably get their feedback on that what are your thoughts on this 
does that feel like if we did these things it would it would work it would get you the result you want okay cool amazing um, so now we're actually going to do the thing that you spend ages typing up. We're actually going to give them um, an overview of what that looks like. Now, if you're doing this custom every single time, this is probably one of the reasons why this feels like a, a kind of laborious process. One of the things that we help our clients to do is we help them to actually package up their services. So at this point, when they offer a proposal, they can actually offer them a few options which are kind of already preset. And so that makes the proposal process so much easier because you already have the prices and you can already see whether this actually fits in to what they're trying to achieve or not. And so in the proposal, you would list the things that you think need to happen in order to get that result. You would walk them through the price and you would talk about the time frame and kind of go over the logistics of what it would look like. And then you're going to ask them for a decision on the call. Right, this is the bit that most people don't like doing because they're like, what, how can I ask for a decision on the call? They're gonna need to go away and think about it. I'm gonna need to write up this proposal, blah, 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 blah. But this is your opportunity. This is where the opportunity is created because you get to really understand what those concerns, what those objections are. Without this, you don't get to understand that, right? Because they're not gonna actually tell you. They're just gonna tell you things to keep you happy. Whereas if you ask for a decision, if you ask for a yes or no, then they're going to be forced to tell you the reason or their thinking behind it, right? So one of the strategies that I like just to make this kind of a lot easier for people, I like to use the traffic light system. Um, I say something along the lines of um, most people are in one of three stages right now. They're a red. It doesn't feel like what we've just suggested is a good fit. Now, most people aren't unlikely to be in this position because otherwise you probably wouldn't have got this far. Or they're kind of an amber, like it feels like a good fit, but they've got some questions or concerns around the proposal that we presented. Or they're a green and they're ready to move forwards. Where are you right now? Okay, so they might say they're a red, they might say they're an amber, or they might say they're green. They might say they're somewhere in between. So the most common answer we get is they're somewhere in between orange and green. And so that's then your opportunity to explore what are the things that are stopping them from being green, right? And that's your opportunity to actually explore what's going on in their head and be curious and be inquisitive and see if there's anything that you can do to help them feel more confident moving forwards, i.e. get them to a green. So that's the one page sales framework. If you want a copy of this, there should be a link below you can grab the one page sales framework um, just as a really simple tool to use in your next sales conversations and I promise you if you start getting into the habit of creating presentations rather than proposals if you get into the habit of running through this structure and seeing objections as an opportunity not only are you going to speed up your sales cycle and get a yes or a no from people so you can move on to somebody else if it's a no or you can get started on that project right then and there if it's a yes um, but also you're actually going to learn a lot more about what people think or what people are concerned about in terms of the offer that you have and so it's a really great opportunity for you to improve that offer and to actually add in anything that might make it much easier for them to say yes